Hi, my name is Robin Wong. I'm a photographer based in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. In this video, I want to talk about the importance of having a powerful image stabilization system for your camera. Let's do this. Whenever we talk about considerations in buying a camera, most people talk about image sensor size, they talk about dynamic range, resolution, low light performance, high ISO. Not many people pay attention to image stabilization. I personally believe that image stabilization is very, very important and it will affect the outcome of your photography. As we all know, Olympus has the most powerful 5-axis image stabilization in the market. I've made a video to talk about how Olympus 5-axis image stabilization work. I'll put the link to the video up here. Please check it out if you have not done so. In this video, I will not repeat whatever that I've said, but I want to explore the reasons why image stabilization is important. Reason number one why image stabilization matters is confidence in nailing the shot. Every time I take a photograph, if I know I have a powerful image stabilization, it helps me to assure myself that I can get the shot more confidently. This is especially true if you have experienced how effective the Olympus 5-axis image stabilization is. I'm not talking about using very low shutter speeds. I'm not talking about going to like half a second or one second shutter speed or dragging the shutter. I'm talking about using normal shutter speeds, 1 over 50 of a second, 1 over 100 of a second, 1 over 200 of a second. The 5-axis image stabilization acts as an insurance in making sure that you'll definitely, definitely nail the shot. Recently, I went to a photography event. There was a camera with no image stabilization. It has very high resolution, a very capable camera, mounted on a very sharp lens. Everything was great, but I was shooting at very fast shutter speeds, one over 100 of a second, one over 200 of a second, but the images came out not 100% sharp. As I pixel peeled the images, there were traces of motion camera shake. Such problems would not have existed if I was using a camera with a powerful image stabilization where it will guarantee that there is no camera shake at such fast shutter speeds. This leads me to reason number two, maximizing per pixel sharpness. No matter how many resolution you have in the image sensor, you may have 50 megapixel, you may have 100 megapixels, it doesn't really matter if you cannot guarantee that every single pixel is optimized. I would rather have a lower resolution, say 16 megapixels or 20 megapixels, but with the help of a powerful image stabilization, every single pixel is optimized. I get the best per pixel sharpness. This is where the 5 axis image stabilization from Olympus really comes in and make a huge difference. I know some of you will argue, hey, if you want to get rid of any motion on the camera, you can just mount the camera on a tripod or monopod and it will definitely stabilize the camera more effectively. I agree, but having to bring a tripod around, a sturdy one is not easy. Depending on what kind of photography that you do, if you are doing landscape photography, of course having a tripod is a must. If you're doing studio work, then it makes sense to have a tripod in the studio to take high resolution shots of products or anything you want to take in that studio your environment. But I'm the kind of photographer that shoots most of my photographs outdoor. I'm a street photographer. Even when I'm doing lifestyle portraits, event photography, I'm doing wedding photography, I'm always on the move with the camera. I'm using the camera handheld about 95%, 99% of the time. I only use the tripod in very, very minimal part of my photography. So it doesn't make sense to have the tripod to guarantee that there's no camera shake. The next best thing and a very, very good solution is having a powerful image stabilization. This brings us to reason number three, true handheld freedom. Without the need of a tripod, monopod, or any support system, you can use the camera effectively without any shake. It gives you more confidence in nailing the shot. I'm not just talking about still photography, I'm also talking about video. A lot of cameras today are also very capable video shooters. You can take stabilized footage if you have a powerful image stabilization. Basic video movements, you don't need a powerful gimbal, you don't need any other support system 
you can just handhold the camera with say the Olympus 5S's image stabilization and still get a smooth footage. To me, that's a plus. I'm not a professional filmmaker. I'm not gonna do a Hollywood production. I'm just doing simple content on YouTube video. I don't want to carry gimbals. I don't want to carry really, really heavy support system with me. I just want to run and gun and still get some cinematic footage. Reason number four why image stabilization matters is to allow you to use lower ISO numbers in low light situations. This is only applicable in certain shooting environment. You can use this method in a non-moving photography. There's no motion, subject is not moving, everything stays static. For example, you're shooting an urban landscape at night. You can afford to lower down your ISO numbers, trust the camera's image stabilization, and use slower shutter speeds. Half a second, one fifth of a second, one tenth of a second. The camera's 5-axis image stabilization will guarantee that you get sharp images without the need to raise the ISO numbers. I have with me the Olympus 60 f 2.8 to have a safe minimum shutter speed for hand holding without image stabilization. I need about 1 over 120th of a second. Now, currently, I still need to increase the ISO. Let's see if we can get away with ISO 6400. That, nope, that's 1 over 80th, ISO 8000, ISO 10000. We need ISO 10000 to get 1 over 125th of a second. Let's take a shot, see the result. Yep, it is sharp, but it is also full of grain. So the image doesn't look very good because of high ISO use. That's ISO 10,000. Let's see if we can drop it down to 6,400. Let's try it. One over 80 of a second. Let's see the image. That's a little bit of shake. It's not 100% sharp, but it's still acceptable. So we need about maybe ISO 8,000 to ISO 10,000 to get sharp image, but of course the image is compromised because of high ISO. Now I'm gonna turn on the image stabilization. Let's turn it on, the IS, and I'm gonna use ISO 200. Let's drop it all the way to the base, ISO 200, where we get the best possible outcome. That's about half a second. <laughs> Let's take a shot. Let's show you the result. Look at that perfectly sharp. The image is perfectly sharp and it's perfectly clean. This is what I'm talking about. If you are using full-frame camera or the larger image sensor cameras, yes, they have their own versions of image stabilization, but it's not as powerful as Olympus. You may need maybe ISO 3200, ISO 6400. Yeah, you can get cleaner high ISO image, but you still cannot beat this ISO 200. I'm gonna show you another time from Olympus. It is perfectly sharp, perfectly clean. ISO 200, that makes a huge, huge difference when you're shooting scenes like this that's not moving. I'm gonna take another shot to show you how confident I am in hand-holding this ISO 200 and get away with consistently sharp images, right? So there you go, the importance of using powerful image stabilization in low-light situations.
finally, reason number five, to improve the shooting experience with the camera. With a powerful image stabilization, shooting through the viewfinder or the LCD screen is a lot more comfortable. The image stabilization will stabilize the footage that you're seeing through the viewfinder, making sure that it is not shaky. This is especially true if you're shooting with a very long lens, say the Olympus 75 to 300 or the 100 to 400, or if you're doing macro photography, going really close, almost at full magnification, where every little tiny shake is magnified. Imagine seeing through a shaky viewfinder, it's so uncomfortable, and having to shoot through that for hours and hours, I'm sure you're gonna get headaches. So I really treasure the fact that the 5 axis image stabilization in Olympus cameras can stabilize the viewfinder and LCD screen, making sure that I see smooth, stabilized LCD screen or viewfinder as I compose my shots. I have here with me the Olympus 60mm macro. We're going to do some macro shots. Uh, let's start with image stabilization off and see how shaky the footage is. All right, so this is, I'm gonna go as close as possible. I'm shooting this handheld. You can see that it's really shaky. All right, of course, I can still take the shot with no issue. I still get a sharp shot, not a problem at all. Uh, it's just that the, you can see that the viewfinder is just shaky all the time. And it's not easy to keep this steady, right? And if it keeps getting shaky like that for a long time, of course you're gonna get a headache. Now, I'm gonna turn on the image stabilization. As so I turn it on, and I half press the shutter button, you can see how steady it is. It just steadies, and the view is so much smoother. You can see the big difference. Now I've switched to the 40 to 150. I'm going to zoom all the way to 150. And you can see that now without image stabilization, I've turned off. It is just very shaky. I'm holding this handheld. It's just so uncomfortable. Imagine looking at this shaky view for hours. I'm sure you're going to get a headache. So I'm going to turn on the image stabilization. Now you can see that immediately, the viewing experience improves a lot. It is a lot smoother. See, it is still a little bit moving there and here. There's still motion, but it is so much smoother. Let's all like to share about why image stabilization matters. It boosts the confidence in nailing the shot. It optimizes per pixel sharpness. It provides true handheld freedom and it allows you to lower down your ISO. And of course, it provides a more comfortable shooting experience. Have you handled an Olympus camera with the true 5 axis image stabilization? Please leave your comment below on your experience using such powerful image stabilization. Or if you have something you disagree with me, I would love to hear from you. If you have enjoyed watching this video, please consider buying me a cup of coffee or you can contribute directly to my PayPal. Links in the description below on how you can do that. Any small contribution goes a long way, but definitely help me to continue making similar content and publish them right here. Please give me a thumbs up, comment, subscribe and share. I'll definitely see you again in the next one. Until then, please go out and take more photographs. Bye-bye.